Hi and welcome back to Mark My Words. Today's video is all about a subject which we all need to learn more about. I know I do and I had to learn more about it when I went through my life setback. Watching this for the first time and you're new to the channel, welcome. Make sure you hit, hit the uh, subscribe button and the notifications bell so when we upload something new you'll be up to date with what's happening here on the channel. But when I, for those who don't know, when I went through my marriage and business collapse, it hit me financially in a big way and, and I avoided bankruptcy only just. So I then, once the initial shock of what had happened to me kind of subsided a little and it took me a while, it took me about a year to get to a point where I started to think creatively about rebuilding financially. I started to go back and, and, and look and study some things I'd I'd, I'd learnt in the past, but things that I needed to refresh around the principles of accumulating a, fo a solid financial base. So today's video is all about some of those lessons that I learnt, albeit it's not financial advice. So if you're looking for financial advice, you go to a financial advisor, a trained professional financial advisor. This is just my story. I think there's some lessons in it that can help you too. So let's call this one financial literacy. 101, mark my word style. I have my marker, I have my whiteboard, and I'm ready to go. Up next on this video. Okay, so the first thing that you need to come to grips with, that I needed to come to grips with off the back of my marriage and, uh, and business collapse, was I had to understand that I would traveled a fair way down this timeline of life. I was 42 years of age uh, when my major life setback happened. And sometimes we need to just understand basically, you know, what this looks like in, in, in simple terms. So, you know, I, I, most of us start work at 20 years of age. I started work at 20, 20 years of age. And, and we travel down this, this, this uh, work life pathway uh, to roughly 65, 65 years of age. So we get to work 45 years uh, either in our own business or uh, for someone else's business or a combination of both. And in my, my story has been, uh, I've had my own businesses, I've had my own investments, uh, still have, not the same ones I had before my marriage and business collapse, but different ones now. I've worked for corporations, I've worked for banks, I've worked for uh, in, in a range of different uh, areas. And so what happened with me, I started working and you know, you track on through life and I started a business at 22 years of age, I started my first business. And I, I learned early on that, um, you know, I want to get ahead financially. I don't know if you, I'm assuming that's the same as you as well. You know, you want to get ahead, make some, some money and, um, you know, you learn early on that money doesn't buy happiness. There's plenty of people that will tell you that. <laughs> but I know that uh, from experience, money doesn't buy happiness, but the lack of money affects your happiness. And, uh, you know, trucked along and things were going great. You know, you, 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 you're making progress and expanding your footprint, expanding your business, uh, expanding your, your, the reach of your business and helping people. And that translates then into revenue. That translates into um, opportunities, translates into lifestyle, translates into travel and uh, money and asset accumulation. And then what happened with me was uh, got to about 42 years of age, and this is what happened. Watch this now. The, my, 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 my financial life and other areas of my life as well, but let's talk about finances, given that's the topic of the video, went like this. It, like that. So uh, if this is zero, if this, if this line here represents um, zero, and this is positive and this is negative, well, financially, uh, th this financial line here went up, fell off the cliff. So, you know, uh, a business collapse and a marriage divorce will do that to you. There's a story in all of that, which I won't go into now, but I had to, at 42 years of age, start thinking about well, it wasn't at 42, it was actually 43, I started to start thinking about, you know, what I was going to do for the rest of my life, because I still had a, the best part of another 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years to go. Well, I thought that anyway. 
and so I had to fast track my situation and so when you're 42 years of age you know and, and this is where you find yourself below zero from a net worth perspective you know I owed more than I owned right so if this is your net worth line here this is where I was at I was below I had I had about a hundred thousand dollars worth of bills I couldn't pay and I had no income and that was a, that's a scary scary position to be in I can tell you so what do you do you turn your life around I, I went and got a worked a job I went back and got uh, employed and started to um, you know do basic jobs you know um, once I, I was licking my wounds for a while and pretty hurt and hurt emotionally and wounded and I started working driving trucks actually I worked uh, driving racehorses to the races for a big trainer and uh, I loved my background I got a background in horse racing I love the industry and I'm not a punter but I do love the sport and my dad was a racehorse trainer and he uh, he taught us as kids a lot about that so I was able to go back and get work there just until I had enough time to work out what I wanted to do next with my, my life get back into business or start a career or something so then um, I ended up another long story I ended up working in a bank I worked for one bank for five or six years and then went to another bank and worked there for five or six years got recruited across to there and uh, and you know had 11 years in banking which helped me generate an income and stabilize my financial life and I was able then to take some savings and start to you know reduce debt um, and accumulate some some uh, some positive uh, cash flow so you know and one of the things that um, I learned early on was a rule called the rule of 72 and I don't know if you've ever heard the rule of 72 it's not taught at school I don't think it should be because it's uh, it's a powerful rule and what it says is if you take the rate of return of anything so you say you get a, a return on uh, your savings at say 5% or 10% or you get a um, or three percent it is more likely now two and a half percent maybe whatever the number is and you divide that return that percentage return into the number 72 that will give you the number of years it will take for that um, asset to double in value providing you capitalize and reinvest the dividends what does all that mean basically it means that uh, if you take the number 72 and you get in simple terms say a 10 percent return right you divide 10 into 72 that will give you 7.2 years or cycles depending on when the revenues so let's say this is 10 percent return per year right 10 into 72 7.2 years for whatever uh, that capital amount is that you've invested at 10 percent to double in value so if you so if you took a hundred dollars right and you mean and you got a 10 percent return on that hundred dollars so for year one you you get ten dollars of, of return of dividend of interest say right and you take that ten dollars and reinvest it back in so year two you've now got a hundred and ten dollars uh, at ten percent and you take that number and then reinvest it in year this is year two year three and you um, take this number here and then reinvest it so you're continually reinvesting the capital or the, or the dividend into the capital so you're capitalizing it after 7.2 years that number that 100 will become 200 right so it's called the rule of 72 and um, it's a powerful rule so I just start thinking about right because when you're 42 years of age I needed to start to accumulate and double and duplicate some assets because I didn't have any <laughs> but you got to start somewhere you got to start somewhere small and so um, so you know started to save some money and then uh, another long story I got uh, remarried is something I never thought I'd ever do again but I did and uh, you know Kate and I um, just decided that we were gonna kick some goals financially so we we got both of our incomes and we started saving together after we were married of course and uh, we really started to uh, we bought a house together um, we, we um, then uh, you know, uh, invest in other things, investment properties, um, uh, businesses, etc. And you know, basically, from the cash flow that we generated from our jobs, we were able then to park some of that surplus cash flow into other things. And so that's principle number one to fast track is you've really got to start thinking about savings and getting on top of your budget. So making sure that your income that you make is exceeded, you know, greater than your expenses. 
So that's rule number one is make sure your income is greater than your expenses. It might sound obvious, but it's amazing how many people will go and buy doodads. They go and get a job and get a good job or get a, a, bit, a breakthrough in business and they make some nice money and straight away they go and spend it. So they don't actually never get a chance to keep it. You know, it's not what you make, it's what you get to keep that counts, right? So um, if you can hang on to it, if you can hang on to money and have, allow it to grow because it has this earning potential, growth potential, money. Every dollar you make has a, a capacity or a potential to duplicate itself if you can hang on to it. Uh, sadly, though, so many people just can't hang on to it. They've got to just give it to, they got to, they believe it's made round to go round. So that's fine, and it is, but you've got to be able to allow it to work in your favor. And by investing at, say, 10% or 5%, you know, if that was 5% return, it would take twice as long, right? 14.4 uh, years of double in value. Um, but the principle is that money has a, if it's reinvested back into itself, has a capacity to grow. Um, and this is basic compounding interest 101. But it's amazing just how how so many people know this but forget about it. So we started to um, then, you know, uh, eventually turn. Th I started to turn things around and we started to, you know, get back to where we belonged above that line. And it's, you know, important that when it comes to accumulating wealth that you understand that if you're using a vehicle, say, but like property to make sure that you're going to need to probably borrow some money, right? You're going to need to buy an asset, has an uh, either investment property or your own home. You know, there's debate out as to whether you should buy your own home or buy your, 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 you know, an investment property as your first property. I'd say do the maths for you, right? You got to know what it is for you. But um, you know, obviously, investment properties have an earning potential. Your own home doesn't, but you need to live somewhere. And so if you're living in an area which has, you know, a, a, a upside to it, in other words, capital growth uh, rates are quite solid in the area that you want to live uh, and you can afford a deposit, right, a healthy deposit of at least 20% of the purchase price in place we did uh, and we're thankful we did because we, we used that then as motivation to pay off the debt, reduce the debt. Money was quite cheap at the time to borrow it. Didn't, the interest rates weren't that high. So we just reduced the debt as fast as we could go to build equity. And equity is something that um, is important to understand as well. And we'll cover that in a second when I clear the whiteboard. So here we are, we've cleared the whiteboard. Now, um, so in terms of product, in terms of progress financially using property as a vehicle, say for example, it's just one asset class that you can invest in. Um, it's whatever you know about. You know, I, I like property because you can see it and it has an earning potential and people have to live somewhere, right? And you know, I love buying land because land is uh, a finite commodity. They're not making any more of it. So sooner or later, um, you know, if you're living in an area that other people like to live and you like to live there and sooner or later it'll grow, it'll grow in size, which means put, it puts upward pressure on property prices normally. And so you can use that capital growth to help you increase your own wealth potential. So basically <clears throat> you buy a house, that's your house, if you can imagine that, and you get a loan for the house. Now, normally a healthy way to go is, um, you know, if you say the house costs you, you're going to put some numbers here on the board just so, but, but let's say the house costs you $300,000. Um, the banks, if you've got a 20% deposit, right, the banks will, and you've got an income, a job or a business, the banks will generally, and you've got a reasonably good credit rating and you haven't, you've been, you know, okay paying off your bills and you've got a good history there, the banks will lend you some money. And so they're going to lend you 20% of $360,000 at your deposit. Um, so that's your first goal is to save for a save to get in the property in the property market, right? If that's your goal, save sixty grand, right? So that might take you a while, but you've got to have a goal for that, right? Set a goal, make it make it an objective. Then um, the bank will so you're going to, you're going to need you know three hundred thousand to purchase the property. Uh, plus you might need some in Australia we have things like stamp duty. You know if you if you if you're a, a homeowner that you've already you've owned home, properties in the past and not a first homeowner you'll need to pay stamp duty. So you need to allow some costs for stamp duty, solicitors, legals, etc. You know, about 4% normally. So, you know, 4% of 300,000 is $12,000 in costs, right? $12,000 in costs. So your total purchase price will be 312,000, right? Minus your $60,000 deposit, which is 20% of the purchase price. So you, now you're gonna need a loan for the difference. Right, 
because the owner wants to be paid for his property when you buy it. So you need a loan to make the difference. So it's 312 minus 60, which is 252,000. That'll be your loan, right, from the bank. So we've got a, now we've got a loan here of 252,000 on a house worth 300,000, year one. And you live, if you're living in a if you're living in an area that has, say, I don't know, four to five percent growth rate, so the the capital growth rates in that area of say five percent as a number, then we know that the rule of seventy two says the rule of seventy two says that if we take five percent and divide it into seventy two, it'll take fourteen years for that house to go from three hundred thousand to six hundred thousand in value. So now in fourteen years you'll have three hundred thousand more equity if you hang on to the house. That is, uh, assuming that it grows at five percent every year. Um, some years it might, some years it may not, you know, depending on, on what's happening. But that's that's the base. So sooner or later that house is going to double in value. And in, in 14 years you want to set a goal, right? Set a goal to have this loan paid off, right? Now you should be able to do it in 14 years. Um, if you're not sure what that will take from a repayments perspective, jump onto your bank's uh, home loan calculator, type in the number 252,000 over a term of 14 years at whatever the interest rates are, and that'll give you how much monthly repayment you need to make on that loan to reduce it down and have it paid off in 14 years. Right, so in this case it'll be 14.4 years, right, as a goal. So now we've got 5% growth, we're gonna have an asset in five years worth $600,000. And you're gonna have a house paid off in that time, and you're gonna have a nil balance on the home loan. So now, in 14 years, so take your age to what it is today uh, and add 14 to it, and you're going to have that situation. Uh, is that a good move? Don't know. It's up to you. Do you think it's a good move to have a house paid off in full worth 600000 in 14 years' time from, so if, say, you're 30 years of age now, right? And when time you're 44 years of age, right? And if you could have your house paid off in 14 years at 44 and have a double in value, then that would be a good outcome, I would think, for you. But along the way, you can actually duplicate that. You can fast track that because once you've got equity, you can then go and buy, use the equity to buy other income producing assets. And that's another video which we'll cover on the next video. But this is a this story is very much um, what we did. Um, it didn't take us 14 years to pay off the home loan though. Uh, it took us a, a lot less than that because we got really aggressive around it. And, um, and then we used, because we had other income producing assets as well as part, in addition to our job that we'd invested in, they produce a dividend which all added up to helping us reduce that debt as fast as we could go. But that story is on the next video. It'll be called, Mark My Words, Financial Literacy Part Two. This is part one, it'll be called part two. Hey, if you like what you see in these videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button. My heart is to help those who have been through a major life setback, make a, you know, just to help them fast track their comeback. You know, um, you may have been through a marriage breakdown, you may have been through a business collapse, or in my case, went through both, right? Uh, I was really searching for some help when it came to rebuilding and I couldn't find any out there. Hence, I promised myself when I <laughs> was going through, I said to myself, if ever I get through this tough time in my life, I'm gonna help other people get through it because I couldn't find any help anywhere from anyone. So thankfully, by the grace of God, I've got through it and uh, healthier now in all areas of my life. Got a great family, great kids, great, got an extra kid actually, Pippa, she's 12 or 14 months old now. and. Uh, yeah, it's another story in itself. Uh, I'm in my 50s these days, but I, and I'm I'm loving life. I could not wish it for it to be any 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 better. But when I was going through my setback, you know, over 12, 13 years ago now, I, I thought, man, th this is tough. I can't get through this. I don't think I can. But if you stay positive and you stay hopeful and you stay healthy mentally, physically, and spiritually, you can overcome anything. And that's that's my passion is to help you do that on these videos and. On my Facebook pages, you can just jump on the links below in the descriptions panel. Click on my website, themarkweight.com. That'll take you to my 10 bold steps. They're 10 bold steps that I uh, lived by to help me fast track my comeback. They're yours today free uh, as a free download. You can download those. I will ask you for e your email address, and so I'll be able to email those out to you. 10 bold steps that I took to help me fast track my comeback. 
But as I said, it's it's all about connecting with you and helping you if you're going through that to fast track it. Why would you let it take you? Why would you allow it to take any longer than it should otherwise? It's just getting your head right, getting your mindset right, knowing the best days are ahead of you. But you have to make a decision to get up off that canvas and rebuild. I know you can do it. Thanks for joining me today. It's great to have you here on this channel with me learning together. We'll talk to you soon.